Hey, today, so just one verse and it's describing, I think it's describing Armageddon, Zechariah 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet, their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. So we've noticed on previous mornings that it seems that Zechariah is describing this final, absolute final battle between good and evil and the final resolution of all this. And here in this verse, we seem to have that. All the forces uh, are gathered against, all the forces of selfishness are gathered against the forces of unselfishness. All the nations are gathered against God's people in Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem that's come down, and now they're coming for the final battle. This is an interesting passage when we compare it to Revelation 20, verses seven, eight, and nine, where we have at the end of the thousand years, you know what happens, God's people are taken to heaven, there's a thousand years, they come back, the new Jerusalem descends, and then there's the resurrection of the wicked, and Satan and those that have chosen selfishness, they all come up, and they surround the holy city, they surround the new Jerusalem, and they're going to make one final attack on the, on the clean and loving and unselfish people that are in that city. So here are these people who died unrepentant, and they've come up now un just as unrepentant. And their plan is to make one final attempt, one final attempt to take, and if they could do it, they'll take God and they'll rip him off of his throne and take his place. That's what they would do if they could. And so this is the scenario that we have. So now instead, it goes this way. God sends fire down from heaven, and these people, as they're standing on their feet, the the fire, the intensity of the heat destroys them, their eyes dissolve in their sockets, and this is a pretty gruesome picture here, but again, remember all the things that have led up to this. God has offered them again and again. He's offered them eternal life. He's offered them a transformed heart, a heart that loves unselfishness. He's offered to make all those changes for us, and some have just determined to hold on tight to all their selfishness, and, and there they are uh, surrounding, and now the end result comes. Fighting against God, the infinite power with your little human power, not the best and brightest idea, but these people are irreconcilable. They just absolutely cannot see anything any other way than that they're first. And so God sends his fire. Fire comes down from heaven and destroys them as they're standing on their feet. This is actually, we're not going into the whole study here, obviously, in a three-minute, four-minute thing, but uh, this is actually where hellfire happens. This is actually where those that have chosen to be full of hatred and destruction, this is where they wind up with that outcome themselves. So the wicked are burned up. They're utterly destroyed. Not even one particle is left. They are devoured. It says the fire devours them. Their demise will be very swift, very complete, and actually kind of merciful in that it will happen so swiftly. But at the end, there's no reason to keep them alive. They are just pure havoc. They are uh, determined. They've been given every opportunity to turn, and they have not turned. They will not turn. And so they have one last opportunity here to repent. And, you know, is there a show of hands? Is there anybody here that repents? No, not one hand would go up if that weren't the case. Instead, they surround the city. They're going to attack it, and God just ends the case, because there's nothing else to be gained by letting evil continue. So that's part of the picture, I think, that we have with Zechariah here. Uh, pretty intense picture. Might seem kind of grim, might seem kind of awful and uh, tormenting and torturous. And yet, after thousands of years, these people have chosen their own way. So they really are just on the path that they themselves have very intentionally, quite intentionally chosen. So God will deliver his people. Uh, they can trust in him. Satan will not deliver his people. And that's the way it will be. Mm -hmm.